Hello, happy Friday. Welcome to the Back of the Net Big Match Preview. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. It's a huge weekend for AFC Bournemouth. After a huge midweek, Tom, mm. Bournemouth secured a win at Selhurst Park against Crystal Palace and boy did that feel good. Yeah, like work mate, no, it was a really nice one. I think um, Iroda's dived into it a bit um, after the game, but actually we probably weren't at the levels that we have been in the last few. No. Um, I'd say against Villa and, and against Sheffield and Newcastle. But we found a different way to win, which I think is really important um, to keep a clean sheet. You know, we saw against Sheffield, like we dominated and we could see the silly goal at the end. Yeah. Obviously, Villa score a late goal. So nice to get another clean sheet in there. And to be honest, just look pretty comfortable. Yeah. Neto had a couple of saves, that was about it. Um, all the subs making an impact. So everything was like tick, 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 wasn't it? It was uh, really, really good, mate. And uh, we even managed to, you know, kind of bring in Sinistera for his first Premier League start. And yeah. yeah, it just all went really well. Relatively early goal. And then we killed the game off at the end. So we could just all chill out, enjoy some late limbs and uh, another win. Yeah, that's right. It seemed to be a, bit, a little bit of game management mm. from Andoni, and that was good to see. A different way of winning. Yes. And look, we're not always going to have wins where it's absolutely beautiful to watch. And at times in the second half, it was a little bit painful, but we were stoic, we were steely, and defensively we were sound. Yeah. And then we hit the back of the net when it mattered. And I said in the vlog title, mm. does Kiefer Moore ever score when there's not limbs? Yeah, he was Rarely, isn't it? Yeah. They're, they're always limbs when yeah. Kiefer scores. And look, mm. it was a good win for us. Let's take a look at the lead table now. And it's good to see that Bournemouth did go up to 15th mm. in the league. Our opponents are, of course, up the other end of the table. And one thing that strikes me, mate, mm. is how close they are to Man City. Well, if Man City are the, the favourites for the title, Man United must be in it then, because they're only three points behind <laughs> them. It's a really weird one. We're not going to be the first people that said it, but it feels like Man U are not doing very well, but they've won four of the last five. Um, like I say, form table suggests differently. They're that close to the to the top of the pack. So, yeah, maybe they're not playing brilliantly, but they're, they're getting wins. And obviously we saw on the same night as us against Palace, uh, they kicked off a little bit later, didn't they? We saw the end. and. Uh, you know, beating, beating Chelsea, so it's a good result for them. And yeah, man, you seem to be ticking along. So I'm just hoping that they might think, oh, well, we've beaten Chelsea now, we'll just beat Bournemouth. Yeah. Uh, and that's what a lot of teams do. And we saw against yeah, Palace, didn't we, with um, Hodgson afterwards kind of saying that I think Palace fans kind of expect yeah. Bournemouth will just turn up and win. And yeah, we're a better side than, than people realise, I think. You'll probably notice if you're a regular to this channel that we're in a different location uh -huh. this week and it wasn't by design. The hilarious backstory, I'm probably selling that as clickbait a little bit, is on our Kofi. I'll put a video up behind the scenes of what went on on Studio Gate. That's what we're calling it. But um, yeah, if you want to subscribe to Kofi, it's afcbpodcast.com forward slash coffee. And that, of course, financially helps us. Get me a Woody out, mate. It's a bit nippy. Yeah, nippy it is. Little, little, yeah, sorry, there's no heating uh, in right. here, mate. We'll but never work. mind. Right, mm. our last four visits to Old Trafford have ended in defeats, including, of course, the last one, and that was a good day. Oh, it was crap. Oh, it was awful. That bug was very good. <laughs> What's, what's going on? 2 -0. I feel like they just scored. Is that 2 0? 3 0. We just, we just heard a. We just what? Well, I've just seen. They've got a big chance, so. 2 0. 2 0. Uh, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw has just scored for Man United. Top, top, uh, top of three the goal, mate. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're crap. They done what they needed to do. It's kind of what was exactly what the form the form book suggested, wasn't it tonight? So yes, mate. That was a that was a tough a tough yeah. night, wasn't it? Yeah, they were just 
better than us all over the past. Was that like the start of January or something? Something like that. And we didn't really... It felt like we had a few of them last season um, where I felt like it was similar when we went to Stamford Bridge. Yeah. Where it was almost like we played the name a little bit and were a bit too respectful, which yeah. I don't think Andoni will be, by the way, um, with the way he sets up. But I just, yeah, I felt like we went to United and went, this is Man U and this is Manchester United. And at that and, time, we were in a bad place in terms yeah. of um, our results sequence that we had. Of course, we played Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. Mm. Gary O'Neill's first competitive game as permanent head coach lost that. And then, of course, Chelsea, we played yeah. after that Chelsea, yeah. which wasn't good, Crystal Palace. And yeah. then. Yeah, Manchester United, and you're right, it seems to be sometimes we f used to freeze against yes. teams like that. And, you know, there's been maybe elements of that this season whilst we've been founding our feet. But it's fair to say we have found our feet. So Manchester United fans, we actually expect to be giving you a game, but so much so that we could win it. Maybe. I mean, our optimism levels are high yeah. right now, and, you know, rightly so. However, mm. we're going to bring you back down to earth. Sheffield United were awful. Well, they were I thought hopeless. Crystal Palace uh, should be looking over their shoulder because that was a mm. really bad performance mm. from them. The win against Newcastle was against a depleted side. We scraped it against Burnley, mate. So talk nice. about this 13 that points out of 18. Now we're playing a real competitor. This is the gauge of where we're at, is it? Yeah, maybe. I think if you want to look at it like that, I mean, I'd look at the Villa just beat Man City. And uh, Villa fans that we obviously spoke to at the weekend are all saying, well, you were better in every department than Man City. Aston Villa aside. But look, I mean, what are the pundits saying about it, though? Because I, I suppose most of them are predicting Man United wins. They are. I, I watched the uh, Stick to Football. Um, obviously, they were doing like their Super Six. Oh, right. thing. Everyone's going, well, Man, you'll beat Bournemouth. And Ian Wright went, mm, I don't think so. Whoa. He went, I don't, I've got a gut feeling that um, Man, well, you won't beat Bournemouth. Always liked Ian Wright. Yeah, always liked Wright. But um, yeah, no, I think... If you, if you do look at it, you go to a potential banana skin for them, maybe. Um, it all depends how the game goes, obviously. But if we get nick an early goal, which we have been doing lately, um, get a pretty early goal, uh, we could make it make it difficult for them. They've just, you know, they won the game, but they've just had a, t a tough game against Chelsea, you know, which would have taken a fair bit out of them. I know they're not expected to go through, but they got Bayern Munich yep. next week. So, you know, they've got some big games. So, who knows, mate? Who knows? I think we're all optimistic. I think if we had been doing this on Wednesday night, I'd probably be going, oh, we win that. Do you know what I mean? Because I was so buzzed after the game. Now I'm going, all right, let's we'll take a draw. Probably. I would definitely take a draw. Yeah, but okay. I, we could, you know. I said to you, didn't I? This do you think, could do be you one think, of them weeks. Do you think it helps, mm. helps that they beat Chelsea in the week? I mean, I know this can be looked at in one of two Both ways, ways, but yeah. um, they obviously won 2-1. But if they'd have lost, they need your reaction and Maybe. Bournemouth would be feeling the full brunt of that reaction I'm sure but now they're mm. they're sort of riding the crest of a wave really being only a win behind Man City albeit their goal difference isn't as good but maybe they'll just take their foot off the gas it's, it's only Bournemouth I yeah, mean I, I know they're not going to be thinking like that no, but, but I know what you mean they would have probably said in the week well whether they would have or not but one win out of them two is not horrific yeah. they just would have expected it to be against Bournemouth but they've yeah. got the one against Chelsea equally if they're not beating Chelsea I'll be going oh they're a bit fragile mm. so you can look at any way you want really to I guess to just like favour whatever you want it to but I think it'll be quite a, quite a good game quite an open game um, I think there there could be goals in it, so I'm looking forward to it. And I just think, from our perspective, a bit of pressure taken off. We would have all taken four points out of Villa and um, Palace, so yeah, if we can nick something, br brilliant. But uh, we're in a good place, mate. So I think they've got to be a little bit careful. Eric Ten Hag. Then in his first full season as Man United gaffer, they finished third with 75 points. Now, if we wind back to this stage of the season after the first 15 matches mm. they were fifth with 29 points but they're a side tom that this season have been picking up wins in stoppage time in injury oh, wow. time after 90 minutes and i still haven't found one out there but i'd love to know the league table if it was just done mm. up to the 90th minute and didn't include additional time because it seems a lot of their mm. wins have come at the death but that that shows a good mentality doesn't it never yeah. say die again that's another thing that you you got you could say that's they're, they're lucky but equally you could say that's good character mm. i mean that's what everyone was saying uh when arsenal beat luton the other night in the last minute Very so true. yeah but sign I, of champions yeah i would like to see that league table as well mate because we'd be higher uh, that that's my only concern now you say how how many late goals they've got we've conceded a few of them haven't yeah. we obviously we had one uh, the other day against villa 
we done it against Brentford. Um, what was the other one? Our Wolves. Yeah. Uh, all kind of late goals that cost us. So, yeah, that's something that we will hope changes. But, yeah, like you say, it's a sign that they keep going to the end. But at least from our perspective, that should be in our in our heads as well. That, you know, man, you go to the end. So keep switched on. So they've got pretty good form then. Look at that form table there. Two top teams, mate. Two top teams. AFC Bournemouth right up there. I'm all for irrelevable. But Tom, talk me through their, mm. their results. I mean, we'll go from, say, the start of um, November where it was the Carabao Cup oh, for yeah, them. And it's uh, <laughs> fair to say that, that that wasn't a good night. No, and that was a really depleted Newcastle side, like reserve team that went Old Trafford and won 3-0. Um, yeah, so that that was, and you thought, right, something's really going wrong with Man United. And uh, yeah, they obviously lost to Copenhagen, but I think they did another one late winner at Fulham. Yeah. On that, um, I think that was an early kickoff because I remember watching it before our game. Yeah. Um, late goal. Again, where they were probably a little bit fortuitous, lost to Copenhagen. Then they scraped the win against Luton. Yeah. And again, they're just scraping it. And even the Everton game, which to their credit, I thought that would be a really tough game after the deduction. Wonder goal. Going to Goodison, yeah. One of the best goals the Premier League seen from Garnacho. And they won 3 0, but actually, Everton could have been 2 0 up. Yeah. You know, it was, it was a weird, weird game. The Galatasaray game was very, very strange um, because they just kept leading and throwing it away and shooting themselves in the foot all the time. But they've shown they could score goals there, six True. goals in a row. Um, in two games, sorry. And then um, the Newcastle one, again, they've only lost 1-0, mm. but I felt like Newcastle murdered them all yeah, game. Yeah, they did, yeah. Um, and then and the Chelsea one was a much better performance, I yeah. felt, um, and probably deservedly got the win or at least earned a point, so good win for them. And yeah, they just, they feel consistently inconsistent, mm. but then the league table suggests they're actually quite consistent. So really don't know what we're going to get from them, mate, but they are Man United and it is going to be a tough game. And now you're going to tell me about head-to-head, -head, which I'm not going to be happy with. Have we ever got anything at Old Trafford? We've got a point, actually. Have we ever yeah. won that? No, we've never won yeah. at Old Trafford. We have beaten them twice there in the Premier League. Can you remember those two occasions? What, at home? Sorry, yeah. our place. Um, yeah, we beat them in the first season, didn't we? Scorers, go on. Josh King definitely scored. Yeah. Who got the opener? Who got the opener? No, King did get no. Did King get both? No. Who got the other one? Straight from the corner. Oh yeah, Stanislas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the one, I think it was in November of the 2019-20 season. What was that? One 0 Yeah. Who got the goal in that? Was that Kingy? That was King. I couldn't even tell I you. Think I'm, just, he, I'm, I'm just asking you, mate. No, I think he like flicked it over his head. Yeah, he did. And yeah. like, yeah, 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 one nil. And then we've, yeah, and I just remember in the Premier League, uh, we draw drew Old Trafford because um, Ibrahimovic, Tyrone Mings game, wasn't it? And 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 Andrew Sermon got sent off. Yes, that's right. And Boric saved a penalty from yeah, Ibrahimovic. Um, I think uh, we scored a penalty. Mark Pugh uh, won us a penalty. Mm. Um, so yeah, we've had. But then since then, it feels like every time we go there, it's just kind of a comprehensive yeah. win for United. So, I mean, there was a five-two. Yeah. That was over COVID, was it? Yeah, it might have been. I think that's where Stan Stanislas might have megged Harry Maguire. Yeah, maybe and, might be right. Uh, you know, uh, those games yeah. have, have been erased from my memory due yeah. to that being the relegation season. But yeah, the three-nil. We have struggled. And then uh, most recently, we have. It's been one 0 Yeah, Casemiro. That was at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was uh, towards the end we of the season. The and that was a that was a dull, yeah, dull we game. One of Gary O'Neill's. I think that was Gary O'Neill's last home game oh, actually yeah. ever for yeah. AFC Bournemouth. So in total, then, if you're going to look at our record away, Bournemouth have drawn one, lost five. In all competitions, we've won three, drawn three, lost fourteen. So it's not overly great. Now, in terms of transfer activity for mm. Manchester United, um. Talk to me, what's happened? They, they got players through the door? Yeah, I mean, uh, they gave Johnny Evans a little trial and everyone thought, well, that's cute of him. And now he's playing. Because yeah. <laughs> it's worked out quite well. Obviously, everyone knows what they did with the goalkeeper situation. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, they would say it hasn't quite worked yet, but, you know, it kind of made sense. You knew the hair was going to go. Anana's obviously one they think's better with his feet and doing all that stuff, but he's, he's made some errors as well. And brilliant at taking out players as well. First Premier League game against Wolves. Got absolutely like smashed them up, but got away with it. I'm kind of glad they got away with it now. Um, the league table, but um, yeah, and then they've obviously brought in Hoyland up up front, who is, is going to be a player, I think, but still quite raw. Mason Mounts just just had injury problems, so done much. That could be still a good signing. Amrabat hasn't quite worked for him yet, um, but they've obviously got him in as a bit of stopgap in midfield. Um, and then they brought in, I think they brought Reggie on, didn't they? Um, just to kind of cover that left back spot when Shaw was out. So they've done bits, um, but they've spent obviously their squads full of a lot of money, and they they need some of the ones that are already there to start putting their finger out a little bit, probably because um, yeah, they didn't let, like I say, they let the Haya go, 
Um, they obviously had a situation with a few players, like obviously Jones was going to go in the end, and obviously we had the Greenwood situation. Fred ended up going. I think I was surprised that they let Alanga go, because I thought it was a player there. Mm. He's doing all right for Forrest, yeah. considering they're not doing very well, but I suppose they've got some money in for him. They've got plenty of wide men, so they've let a few go. But like you say, they've... they've they spent a lot of million money in the previous one. It's players like Sancho and Anthony that they need to start seeing a bit more from. So, yeah, we'll see. But they've still got some top players, mate. Bruno being the main one. Team news from Man United, then. They've got a few players on their injury mm. list, haven't they? Yeah, well, I mentioned Mason Mount, obviously. Yeah. Um, Lissandra Martin is a big one as well. I think Casemiro's still out. Um, it feels like J- Jane Sancho is just not available. Oh, yeah. Bit of a weird situation no there. Um, not sure about Varane either. And then Manassi is still out, but he's probably back up anyway. So they've got a few bits and bobs, but I don't think there's anything fresh from mm. the from the week anyway. And also Andoni Iriola had his press conference and confirmed that yeah, we're pretty much as we are. There might be a few tired legs, I'm absolutely mm. sure. So no news of any new injuries. I'm hoping the to have updates soon on the, the likes of like Alex Scott and sort of how he's progressing because yeah. I'd like to just get a few updates. Lloyd Kelly, of course, I mean, we know he's going to be out for a while. Max Aaron's, of mm. course, and just see how they're doing. Some little progress reports to have that little shining light in the distance. We just want to know mm. how far it is away. Okay, then, do you want to know the referee time? Of course, you do. Yeah, go on. It's Peter Banks. We mm. had him for our opening game of the season against West Ham. Okay. He was also in charge of, not us, Spurs versus Sheffield United, which involved some very controversial refereeing decisions. Do you remember that one that uh, mm. Spurs managed to score two very late goals in that one? To get the big side, though. Over the blades. But, yeah, let's do team, shall we? Yeah, go on. All right, Tom, mm. uh, the Theatre of Dreams is going to be graced by which mm. Manchester United 11? We've got the yeah. team lineup on screen, and they play in a sort of 4 2 3 1, fairly yeah. similar, do they? Yeah, pretty much, mate. Um, I think it's, it's always a difficult one, I say this all the time, but you, you feel like there will be a few changes, or at least one or two, from both sides just because of the quick turnaround. But obviously, they've done well against Chelsea, so I don't think they want to change too much. Yeah. Um, obviously, Anana being goal. I'm going to stick with Dallow at right back. They could bring in Van Bissaka, but I think they're going to go Dallow. I actually think uh, Johnny Evans might come in to partner Maguire. Okay. Because Lindelof's coming a bit, but he's had his injury problems. So I'm going to go with them too. Uh, Luke Shaw's back now and seems to be doing all right. So as long as he's come through okay, I yeah. assume he'll be at left back. In the kind of two, I think you've got to play McTominay. After. You know, a goal machine. I know. Uh, he seems to, he scored a lot this season, it seems. Yeah, and for Scotland. Yeah. Um, we were saying, weren't we? They've got... John McGinn's going for a title with Villa. Yeah. McTominay scoring every week, and Ryan Christie's the best player we've ever seen. So Scotland yeah. could win the Euros. That's my worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, McTominay will definitely play. I think they might bring in Kobe Mainu, the young lad again, because um, he's done nothing wrong. They, they left him out of the Chelsea game for Amrabat. Right. And I wonder if that was just because they're a bit more protection against Chelsea. I think they might bring him in against us because he's just got a bit more legs, a bit yeah, more energy, yeah. and we're quite an energetic side yeah, in the midfield. Yeah. So I think they might do that. Um, Bruno Fernandes will definitely be in front of them. Don Acho will definitely go off that left, I, I would assume. I'm gonna. He's not. He's not ideal there, but I think they need to get Rashford back in. Yeah. So I think he'll play off the right. He and then, scored against us last time. I'll try. Did. Um, so I think they might drop Anthony out for him, and then Hoyland will probably start through the middle. I would have thought. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, but yeah, be a few changes in there, I reckon. But still quite a strong side. Right. As for Bournemouth, then similar mm. formation. Yeah, pretty much the same as, as theirs. The four-two-three-one kind of system. Um, for us, we just want to keep playing the same team. But we did make a change in the yeah. week. So I think he's shown that we do need to use a squad a little bit yeah. uh, with the amount of games. But I think he'll try and keep it as steady as he can. So Neto will clearly be in goal. Yeah. Um, I can't see the back four changing because if United fans don't know, we've got two of our back four out anyway, haven't yeah. we? So um, Smithy are right back. Who is brilliant, by the brilliant way, against Crystal Palace. Absolute he'll, super. He'll have to have another good one. As were, to Nacho. As were, in fact, our back four. Our back four were excellent. Um, and that will stay the same for me. So Zabani was brilliant. Centre half with our goal scorer Marco Sanessi mm. and Milos Kerkes at left back. Um, Going to stick with with Lewis Cook and Ryan Christie yeah. in front. They've just been faultless. Um, I think that he's going to bring Tavernier back in. The right, yeah. I didn't think Semenya looked as good on the right as he does on the no, left. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, and Sidney got his start. Did did nothing wrong. Got an assist, but I think he might come back out. So I think he's going to Tav on the right. So menu over to that left, and I think it might be time for Billings to get his start yeah. over Kyver and then Solanke up front. I think I said to you, I just, I just fancy with Billing coming out of the team recently, I thought he's going to start one of these two games and he didn't start against Palace. So I reckon, I wonder if they'll look at a bit more physicality in there against um, Man United and, and go with Billing over Cliver. That's what I'm going to do, mate. 
What we'd really love to know is your predictions. Let us know in the comments. I'm going to be coming over to Tom's very, very shortly. But I want to know what you think first and foremost. And what we're going to do is if we agree with them, we're going to heart your comment as we've done for every show so far. So not many. Um, what do you think? Do you think we're going to win? I want to go to Tom now. Uh, you, oh, I know you want to go with your heart, Tom. Mm. But what, what, I did, the, you, let's all people say I. You or know, is it the same? People say I'm all far fetched. I was the one that said I don't see us beating Villa. Remember? You uh, also said in the pub I can't see us losing this year for the <laughs> remaining fixtures. Yeah, I had a beer. Um, but yeah, I I called two two against Villa. Remember? Yeah. So I wasn't going. Oh, we're going to beat Villa. Called the win against Sheffield United. Yeah. Called the win against Palace. Yeah. Did I not? Yeah. 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 Manchester United 2. Right. AFC Bournemouth 3. Fuck! <laughs> what? We're in the Old Trafford. This is our week. This is going to be a week that we go back and I go, do you remember that week where we beat went to Sellers and Old Trafford and got six points? I'm telling you, I'm believing. I'm going to go for a one all draw. Yeah, fine, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'll definitely take it. I just got this feeling. He's got a feeling. Oh. Man United fans, you got a feeling. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> By the way, if, you, if you've not subscribed, I know you. I think you're all only interested in Man United stuff, so you're probably following Stratford Paddock and Full Time Devil. And I was mm. called now United, St Stand, all that kind of stuff. Loads, that is Stratford Paddock, Full Time uh, United yeah, Stand, loads. United View, all that stuff. Um, you might want to subscribe to this over here because, okay, what we do oh, straight after Full Time, there's a video that's uploaded, Tom, right? Yeah, we do the fan cams, get the instant fan reaction outside yeah. the ground, yeah. And then next day. Next day, the vlog will be out from everything that we experienced in that day. Match day vlog. So if you're a Man yep. United fan and you want to know what it's like from an away perspective, we will tell you via our match day vlog. And then we talk about it, mainly from a Bournemouth point of view. But of course, we'll make yep. our remarks on Man United in our second look on Monday, right? Yeah, exactly. Where we dissect it a little bit further. So we'll get into that. So and that's got to be it. And then we need, no, 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 no. Uh. on the Tuesday, like a generic show about the Premier League, which may mention Manchester United again. Premier League show. Absolutely. We've got to be doing that. And that's it. It's got to be done. That's uh, it. Uh, oh, wow. Subscribe because look, we've got one to catch up on already because we've uh, played Crystal Palace away. But Manchester United, an away day fan experience review is coming up too, where we look at parking, the walk to the ground, the noise, the atmosphere, the food, the value for money, all these different things. And then we rate it and you put you on a, on a league table. So if you haven't already, you can do a couple of things. Yeah. Click the like button, that's always important. You can click the bell if you want as well, because yeah. that'll tell you when them videos exactly come out. And uh, please click subscribe, because that's the one that matters the most. We really appreciate it, because as you can see, even though we, we got no, we don't care about you, I'm being honest, man, you, we're Bournemouth fans. Look how much content we give them. Yeah. It's unbelievable, I, isn't it? I mean, yeah. And I'll tell you what, Man City are in that, because we've been a Man City away, they're already in that away day league table. Yeah. See if they can, yeah, well, where are, they, where are they? Where are they? They're, 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 they're second from the bottom, aren't they? Yeah, they're not doing well. Yeah, they're not doing particularly well. So, can you know do better? Mm. We will find out. But anyway, um, we're all looking forward to going to Old Trafford. We seem to be constantly on the road at the moment, but we wouldn't change it for a thing, would we? Safe travels if you're going up. Leave yourself about five hours or so. Oh. And yeah, let's cheer on the lads. And look, maybe three points, as he said. Maybe a point, like I said. Either way, Bournemouth are moving. Up the chairs, and we'll see you at Old Trafford. See you later. See you later on. Oh, we're not going to lose again. Come on. <laughs> Whew, take come a, on. Take a point. Oh, yeah, take a point.